Coming up on Mountain News First at Four, one Southern Kentucky hospital has seen an increase in patients the last few days due to sickness. And tens of thousands of people in Maryland are still without power after a plane tangles with high voltage power lines. Plus, a wild week of weather is on tap across the region. I have your full first alert forecast coming up as Mountain News First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. Sickness is still spreading across Kentucky. Doctors in Southern Kentucky say they are seeing a lot of flu cases. WIMT's Phil Pendleton has more from Pulaski County. Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital has been a very busy place today. In fact, it was that way over the weekend as well. Getting a parking place at the hospital has been somewhat challenging today because of all the walk in traffic. The clinic at the Somerset Hospital saw 300 people from Friday through Sunday and 200 of them tested positive for the flu. Some of the urgent care centers are running out of the flu screens because they've used so many. Most of the illness is tied to the flu. And while there are a handful of COVID-19 cases, it's nowhere near the high level of community spread with the flu. Dr. Barry Dixon says people are a lot more active coming out of the high levels of COVID spread, are less likely to get a flu shot or to wear a mask. For instance, let me give you an example. When COVID started that year, I saw three cases of flu. And the reason was everybody was masking up, washing their hands and staying away from people usually see three to 400 cases in my practice. As far as the flu is concerned and transmission levels, this area of Kentucky is in the red as far as that is concerned. But as far as COVID-19 transmission, it remains in either the yellow or really the green. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. The Kentucky Department for Public Health says there were more than 3,400 cases statewide of the flu. In various places across the country, sports betting is now legal. But here in Kentucky, legalization efforts have come up short. The effort to legalize sports betting in Kentucky has not been successful so far. This year, the sports betting bill made it out of the House, but it came up short in the Senate. So the big question is, would they even have the votes next year? Lawmakers say it's tough to say whether or not it will happen. There's also the issue of next year being an odd numbered year, so that means in Frankfurt it will be a short 30 day session. Many lawmakers hope that will not be an issue. Sports betting is just a, an extension of our history and tradition of betting on horses, which is a form of sports betting. There has been some opposition to sports betting. The Family Foundation has opposed previous legalization bills saying that sports wagering is not constitutional in Kentucky. The group also believes it would bring social harm to Kentucky families. It is a gloomy Monday across the mountains, but we are getting a little bit of a break from the rainfall, but that rain is going to return by the middle of the week. Here is a live look over at UVA wise looking at a cloudy sky back in the distance. Current temperature about 10 degrees below average today. 43 degrees over in wise. Some of us in the lower 50s right now. 50 for Somerset and London. 49 for Urban. 45 in Pikeville and 48 over in Jackson. Up on satellite and radar. Most of us are quiet. We are looking at a cloudy sky though, but some changes. Those are on the way, especially by the middle of the week. Late on Tuesday and into your Wednesday, showers are going to return, and those temperatures are going to take a plummet into Thursday, but then we warm back up into Friday. So a busy week is on tap. That full forecast on the way in just a little bit. Steve. All right, Cameron, thank you. President Biden heads to Michigan tomorrow to talk about the economy. As days from now, rail workers are threatening to go on strike nationwide. WYMT Washington News Bureau reporter Jamie Bittner explains the big problems that could cause. A national rail strike could throw holiday shopping off the rails, plus cost the nation billions. Now President Joe Biden is heading to Michigan as he works to broker a deal. The busy sound of shops could be stalled by the silence of grounded trains. Rail workers nationwide are threatening to walk off the job December 9th. The president wants to get talks back on track. 
He's heading to Michigan Tuesday, a state that would be railroaded by the strike. These have very real and dire consequences for Michigan's economy and employers. Our automotive, our agriculture, and certainly our chemistry industries would be severely impacted by this as well, as would uh, other supply chain modes of transportation like trucking. Last week, eight rail unions ratified an agreement on pay, health, and benefits. Four are rejecting it. If they can't get on board, the Association of American Railroads says a strike could cost the country $2 billion a day. Please make this a priority. States like Michigan and groups like the National Retail Federation are asking Congress to step in if a deal doesn't go full steam ahead. Folks do generally recognize that this is kind of a too big to fail situation. And so we need to do what it takes in order to keep this critical component of our supply chain up and running. The president will talk about the economy and jobs in Bay City. Just in October, Michigan state leaders were here at the White House to talk about those very same topics. At that time, they met with the vice president. In Washington, I'm Jamie Bittner. Lori Lightfoot filed her nomination petitions this morning, seeking another term as mayor of Chicago. Today is the last day to file for the Board of Elections in Chicago. In her first race for mayor back in 2018, Lightfoot defeated Tony Preckwinkle. Historically, candidates file their petitions on the first day to show more political force and get their name at the top of the ballot, which is considered an advantage. Candidates must collect at least 12, uh, 12, 12,500 signatures to get on the ballot by February 28th. Millions of people cannot use their tap water today in Houston, Texas. It's such a problem, schools are closed. The entire Houston water system is deemed unsafe right now. That's 2.2 million customers. The reason? A temporary loss of pressure. City officials say water should be boiled for at least two minutes before using to destroy all potentially harmful bacteria. Water pressure has been restored, but the boil notice will likely remain in place until tomorrow. In Maryland, a pilot and a passenger were rescued after their plane got tangled in high voltage power lines and they were stranded for nearly seven hours. At one point, tens of thousands of customers were without electricity and schools in the area were closed today due to the incident. CBS's Scott McFarland is at the scene. It was a successful midnight hour rescue mission in the dense fog. Crews first had to clamp power lines to remove any threat of electrocution before they gently maneuvered around the transmission tower to bring down the plane's pilot and one passenger. The single engine plane crashed into the structure just miles from an air park in Montgomery County, Maryland, outside Washington, D.C. To be up at highs, I think it's pretty frightening. Once rescued, one of the plane's occupants was greeted by cheers before being wheeled to a waiting ambulance. Both were taken to local trauma centers after suffering serious but not life-threatening injuries, including hypothermia. Police identified the pilot as 65-year-old Patrick Merkel of Washington, D.C., and his passenger as 66-year-old Jan Williams of Louisiana. Merkel and Williams stayed in touch with rescuers during the ordeal, waving out the plane window and communicating through the night by phone. We seen the flash of light from the bedroom window, and I thought it was lightning at first, and then just heard the pow, and then we came out here and seen the plane. The crash happened during a rainy and foggy Sunday that delayed commercial flights in the D.C. area, but it's unclear if that contributed to the incident. The collision knocked out power to more than 100,000 customers in the D.C. suburbs, with most service being restored by the morning. Never seen anything like this before. It's amazing, you know, that they're, they're okay. Hazmat crews remained on the scene as they try to reconnect some of those power lines as the FAA and NTSB begin their investigations. Scott McFarland, CBS News, Gaithersburg, Maryland. Coming up on First at Four, it's the biggest day of the year for online shopping. We'll take a look at the best deals on Cyber Monday. Plus, all is quiet across the region right now, but those rain chances are on the way by midweek. That full forecast right after this.